Blessings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Would like to appreciate God for giving us this opportunity to speak to one another, taking into cognizance that uh, on the 25th of uh, May, it has been Africa Day, a day where Africans uh, gathered together to consider their Africanness and the issues that the devil and the opportunities that Africa has, where Africans, African leaders gathered together to look at the dangers and the opportunities that Africans face or that are faced by Africans. So I would like to uh, explore what scripture says about Africa and about Africans. There are a lot of texts in the Bible where God speaks, where the Bible speaks about Africa and about Africans. Yes, there are many interpretations and many meanings of the meaning of the term Africa. Some of you, when you think about Africa, you think about negative things. You think about poverty. You think about wars. You think about conflicts. You think about evil. You think about uh, uh, um, you think and uh, think that it is a dark continent, but that's not what God says, and that's not what the scripture says. The scripture say in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, God created the heaven and the earth. So there is one earth which was created by God. And Africa is on this earth it is in this earth which god created so africa is a creation of god it is an idea of god it is a place of god it is when god created the heavens and the earth he said it was good so in other words africa is good africa is rich Africa is endowed with riches, with wealth. Africa is um, a resource with all uh, types of resources. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 68, verse 31. What does God say about Africa? It says, nobles shall come from Egypt. Nobles. Nobles shall come from Egypt. Egypt, Cush shall hasten to stretch out her hands to God. Cush shall hasten to stretch out her hands to God. Listen, my brother, listen, my sister. When Mother Africa understand that uh, the genesis of the nobles is Africa. Africa is the mother of nobles. When Africans and when the world would consider that, it will accord Africa the, the respect that is due to it. And the Africans, the respect that is due to them. When Africa would appreciate the creator who created Africa and who created the earth. When Africa and Africans would appreciate and the Hassan, that's what the Bible says, and the Hassan and the quickly stretch out their hands out to the Lord. The stretching of the hands to the Lord can mean prayer. The stretching out to the hands of the Lord can, can be seeking the Lord's help, depending upon God and looking at God for assistance and help, for sustenance and everything. When uh, uh, Africans will stretch 
out their hands to God. Stretching out your hand to God might mean absolute surrender, absolutely giving your life entirely to God. Believe you me, my African brother, my African sister, my African child, my African mother, stretch out your hand to the Lord as a form of surrender, as a form of giving your life to God, acknowledging that God created you. God created you in his own image. In the image of God, you were created by him to image him, to be like him, and to act like him. God is a loving God. Therefore, Africans are loving people. Africans are loving, welcoming people. Africa is a land of hospitality, is a land of greatness, is a land of nobles, is a land of riches, is a land of healthy. Hasten, therefore, my brother Africans, hasten therefore to stretch out your hand to the Lord to seek his help to seek his provisions to seek his appropriate blessings to seek that the resources that God has blessed Africa with will be refined will be uh, will be uh, transformed to Feed the Africans, African leaders, consider, consider the blessedness of Africa. And when you live in Africa, when you rule in Africa, when you lead in Africa, consider that Africa and Africans are created by God. We're blessed by God. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 35, 35. Chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, the Bible says, God shows no partiality. God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him does what is right, is acceptable to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God shows no partiality. Whether you are in Africa, whether you are wherever you are, God shows no no partiality. Whatever continent you are, God shows no partiality. In every nation, anyone who fears God does what is acceptable to God, does what is right, is acceptable to God. Therefore, it does not mean, I mean, the, 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 the thinking that Africa is dark, Africa is poor. It is a wrong conceptualization, a wrong understanding of Africa. Africa has more light than other continents. That's my understanding. Africa has its own ways, has its own systems, has its own culture. There is no culture that is better than the other. In every culture, there are people who do not fear God. There are people who do not do right. There are people who are not acceptable to God because of how they present themselves to God and how they, I mean, what they do. Africans who fear God and who do right are a good representation of what God created and what God formed. They are noble. They are great. They are an example of what God demands from us. Therefore, may I encourage you, my brother, my sister, that fear God and represent the Africans very well. Fear God, respect Him, honor Him, worship Him, and represent our continent very well. For every nation, anyone can do what is right. Every nation, anyone can do what is not evil, what is, in, I mean, can, can stop doing evil, can stop cooperating with Satan, can stop being diabolic or acting with the di like a diabolos. Africans are invited, encouraged to serve the interest 
of the earth, the one that formed him, the one that created him. Therefore, my brother, I call upon you to hasten to stretch out your hand to God, to hasten to stretch out your hand for salvation, for deliverance. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 27. Acts chapter 8, verse 27. Let's look at Acts chapter 8, verse 27 to 31. This is what the Lord says. Acts chapter 8, verse 27 to 31. This is what the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. It says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian. Ethiopia is in Africa. An Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of the treasury of the Candes, queen of the Ethiopians. Watch, see, an important official, an African important official, an, an Ethiopian, a man responsible in charge of treasury, wise man. Believe you me, when God created humanity in every nation, in every place, in every culture, in every people, he gave them wisdom. He gave them wisdom to manage life and to manage things, to be accountable and to be great stewards. Africans, you are not evil by God's design. You are not corrupt by God's design. You are not sinners by God's design. By God's design, you can fear God. By God's design, you can stretch out your hand to God and seek repentance if you were corrupt and seek repentance to do right, to stop being uh, evil, to stop being satanic in your approach, to stop being diabolic in your approach to stop cooperating with Lucifer. Africans, this is the time, if as long as you are an African, this is the time, this is the moment. The Bible says the days of evil, the Lord um, ignored. Now he tells everyone everywhere to repent, to come to the Lord, to turn to the Lord, to forsake evil, to leave evil, and to return to the Lord, to image God, to be like God, to demonstrate uh, God's goodness. Look at this Ethiopian. The Bible says he was in charge of all the treasury of the Candace, the queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship an African man worshiping God, worshiping God. Africans are excellent worshipers. They worship God in spirit. They worship God in truth. They worship God with their strength. They worship God with the whole of their being. Africans are great worshipers. And the target of worship, the object of worship can be God. You African can be God. The Bible says on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. Hallelujah. Africans are known in scripture as good, I mean, as readers, as people that read, as people that read the scripture, as people who consider scripture an authority, a guidance to life. I tell you, my brother, I tell you, my sister, scripture 
is the word of God. It is excellent for every creation, for every man, for every person, be it an African, be it um, whatever continent you come from. Listen, scripture must be paramount. Scripture must be a priority in your life. I see this gentleman reading scripture, reading scripture. No wonder why he was a nobleman. No wonder why he was a, an important official. No wonder why he was a, 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 a I mean, eh, 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 in, in custody, I mean, eh, 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 a man in charge of all the treasury. Listen, my brother, the scripture is transformative. It's transforming. It will transform your mind. It will transform your culture. If your culture has been corruption, allow scripture to change you. Allow scripture to... Uh, to, to, to transform you, allow scripture to, 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 to lead you, to change you, because scripture is transformative. Even if your culture is, 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 is that which is evil, allow scripture to change your culture, allow scripture to sanitize your culture so that you remain with a good culture, a reading culture. This man had a reading culture. He was reading the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, the Spirit told Philip, go to the chariot and stay near. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. And he asked, do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked, how can I understand? He said, unless someone explains to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the sh shearer in silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendant for his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is this? Who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture and he told the good news about Jesus. See, my brother, my sister, if you read scripture it will direct you to the right man jesus christ jesus christ is one and the only way that transforms life that transforms culture that informs um, a, 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 a personal right relationship with god you need a right relationship with god Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Allow me to say to you, Jesus is the answer to transforming the world, to transforming culture, to transforming behaviors. If there is, an, if there is one man and one thing that can bring about peace, reconciliation, justice, the well-being of children, the well-being of families, the well-being of communities that can transform relationships, that can uh, uh, reduce conflict, that can eliminate poverty among us, that can eliminate all sorts of injustices, all sorts of satanic and evil and uh, all evils that you can think about. You know what? Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. The scripture is the answer. It will direct you to Jesus. And this man, the Bible says, he accepted Jesus Christ in his life and he got baptized. And this was the transformation of the man from Africa. This was the the, 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 the man who brought the gospel to Africa in the very uh, first century when the gospel was uh, being 
uh, propagated. This man brought the gospel to Africa. Well, oh, praise God about Africans. They hasten to accept the good news. They hasten to stretch their hands in surrender, in honor, in worship of God. My African sister, my African brother, he is an example. He is a prototype. He is a model that you can follow your ancestor you can follow your leader you can follow good examples listen my brother listen my african man we honor ancestors we respect them especially and only those that have done well and only those that have done good only those that have lived well if ancestors have done wrong I mean, if your grands have done wrong, they are not honored. They are not respected in our culture. You see, our culture as an African culture, it's noble and good. There are areas where it is noble. There are areas where it is good. Like all cultures in the world, there is no culture that is better than the other. Every culture has got its uh, a satanic, has got its own evils, has got its own diabolic uh, 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 elements in it as much as an African culture so but there is something good about the African culture the good that the African culture is embedded with worship the African culture is embedded with learning is embedded with uh, an, an openness to learn an openness to grow in our African culture you begin to learn while you are at your mother's womb until you die even when you die you are learning how to die because you have never died the only difference is that you have no opportunity to write about the experience of death but those that will be watching at you will see and learn what death is all about and they will interpret that the african culture with its own belief with its own <laughs> and noble things let's respect them the point that i'm up to this man this noble man is a can be your role model you can follow him you can be your ancestor why don't you take him as an ancestor follow his example he accepted jesus christ you african hasten to stretch out your hand to god like this eunuch like this man like this noble man africans let's be good stewards of the God-given resources. Let's stop corruption because it doesn't, it doesn't belong to us. God did, didn't create corrupt people. This is, corruption is evil. Desist and repent and change from it. Be transformed from it. This idea that Africans and corruptions are synonyms no 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 a thousand times i say no i see an african man put in charge of the treasury of a, a nation of the treasury of a country can't we have african leaders who can be put in charge of the treasury and the resources of the land and they and they they become good steward of it my brothers, my sisters, don't disappoint us. Follow this model, an African man who gave his life to Jesus Christ, who was a good a steward of God's resources. What does the Bible say about Africans? Africa is blessed. Africans, I mean, Africa is a mother of nobles. It's a mother of people that stretch out their hands to the Lord. There is a place where people are open to worship and they are open to learn and they are receptive to the gospel. May God bless you richly, God, I mean richly be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for every man in Africa as we celebrate Africa, our Africanness. God Almighty, bless us and best wishes to every African country, 
and to Mother Africa, blessings to it and best wishes to it. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. God bless you.